What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. Show going out to Bozeman, Montana. Montana State Boxers new head coach Matt Logan. He was on the Boss Man Show doing big things. Coach Logan, love the hat, man. I love the fit that you rocking, man. How's life out there, man? Bozeman, man. It's been great. It's been great. Yeah, we uh we, we got here almost three months to the day. Uh, and you know, it's just been an incredible welcome uh by the community, uh, the university. Uh, all the fans uh, here in town are, are are so excited about you know what uh, what's been what's been going on here at Montana State, and uh, you know I'm thrilled to have the opportunity now to, to 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 lead the Bobcats into the next chapter. And how cool is it to have a job where it's you you have an established situation where it's not like you're having to come fully rebuild things from scratch? Like you came into a good situation. How important was that for you when deciding to leave your D2 job company that you were going somewhere where you have to fully rebuild it from scratch. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Um, you know, number one, Coach Sprinkle uh, and his time here uh, really laid a, a tremendous foundation, uh, both in, in terms of the culture of the program, and, but also, you know, the expectation level. And, and, and when your expectation level matches your resources, you've got a chance to sustain success. And so, you know, obviously being, um, you know, at the the small college level for 12 years, um, you know, I was at two different institutions that that were accustomed to to winning and had high expectations. And and so I certainly uh, was going to be picky, you know, in terms of, of, of finding another opportunity uh, where all those things were in alignment and and, and things were in place to, to have continued success. And so, you know, the, the job that Coach Sprinkle did here uh, made this opportunity that much more attractive. And when you couple that with Leon Costello, our athletic director, and President Cruzado, and just the momentum that is uh, kind of surrounding Bozeman and Montana State right now, it, it really um, is a, a tremendous opportunity. Coach Logan, man, could you explain for our listeners the difference between being the D3 level, D2 and D1 for scholarships and building your roster? Because I know differences at each level. Explain to our listeners, give us some education about how different it is from D3 up to now division one. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've, I've been fortunate to, to play division one basketball, be an assistant coach at the division one level, and then be a head coach at both the division two and division three levels. And each, uh, each level, you know, has uh, differences, um, you know, to, for starters uh, division three, athletes uh you know don't don't get athletic scholarships so for your listeners that aren't familiar you know th- those kids are investing into their college education and their athletic experience but that being said um 
you know, my experience at that level was dealing with people and student athletes as competitive as their division two and division one peers. Um, it, it, they just didn't maybe have a couple inches here or a couple inches there in terms of the size and athleticism, but, um, you know, the, the, the competitiveness of athletic programs at that level, when you're talking about competing for a national championship, as we were uh, at Whitworth, um, you know, your day-to-day competitiveness and, 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 and everything isn't any different at a division three program at that, you know, at that ilk. Um, now at the division two level, you have scholarships, uh, but the scholarships are um, more like a salary cap system where, you know, most division two programs don't have a full allotment of scholarships and it's capped at 10 for men's basketball, for example. Um, so you're not going to be able to fill, you know, a, a full team with, with only 10 players and most scholarship situations are, are less than that. And so it's really about managing resources and you can spread those out, um, you know, amongst 13, 14 athletes, uh, as opposed to every scholarship going to one student, uh, which is what you have at the division one level. Um, obviously as you, as you go up a, a level, um, you know, what you need to be successful changes. Um, but in many ways it also stays the same. So it's really just about ca- calibrating, you know, as I've said in the past, like, you know, calibrating your evaluation. Um, but from my experience, the, the, the mindset and the work ethic and the competitive drive of athletes at those levels are, are no different. And Coach Logie, how has your workouts been since you've been there a few months, getting bringing guys in, training the guys you want to retain? How has it been kind of setting your foundation, setting your culture, these young men, getting to meet them, getting them to kind of evaluate what you already have? Yeah, it's been uh it's been a great process. Uh we were fortunate to to have five um rotational players, you know, from last year's NCAA tournament team, um, you know, here when I got here. And so, as I mentioned, Coach Sprinkle had uh, a tremendous amount of success here and laid a, a very strong culture. And so I knew coming in that those holdovers, those guys that, you know, um, have been here before um, gave us a, a great foundation in terms of their work ethic, their competitiveness, uh, what it, knowing what it takes to win. Um, and then it was about finding, you know, eight new players that, that could fit that puzzle, uh, both in terms of their talent level and their, uh, positional fit and, and experience uh, as well. So we didn't want to get super young, uh, but we knew that we were going to be new no matter what with eight newcomers. And so gelling that group together, um, it, it's it's really like starting from scratch because even though the five, you know, holdovers know Montana State, they know Bozeman, they might know some processes uh, a little bit better than the newcomers. Um, you know, I'm I'm a different coach than Coach Sprinkle and, and we play uh, probably a different way than they did last year, you know, and so everybody has to learn that at the same time. And so really you're, you're, you're starting from scratch and we've been getting better one day, one week at a time. I hear that. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's funny you say that because I want to ask you about the recruiting process with the NIL and the portal. Do you feel like you had a better opportunity with some high school kids now because the portal and they, people won't know commodities now. So high school kids can kind of get left behind. So you found some better high school kids that you maybe not going to have a chance with now, but you have a chance with them because they're not getting recruited by the big boys right now. Yeah, I think there's 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 opportunities all over the recruiting market. I mean, it's just like finance. You know, when, when the economy crashes, um, although it seems like everybody's losing their money, there's a lot of opportunities that are disguised in that, you know. And so a lot of the the, the top companies in the world – you know, when you go back to how they started, they began through some sort of adversity or change in the market, in the system. And so as a staff, it's our job to identify those those opportunities, you know. And as you mentioned, um, you are seeing talented three-star, four-star high school athletes go to programs and levels that they might not have entertained, you know, just three or four years ago uh, because the transfer portal has um, expanded the recruiting pool and, and everything has started to move on the spectrum uh, to players that have more experience versus uh, a younger player with talent and potential. Um, obviously, we have to balance that. You know, you, you can't get too young um, in today's day and age because you have so many athletes out there, 
you know, that are playing in their fifth and sometimes sixth year of college athletics. And, and uh, you know, that's a, there's a huge difference between an 18 and 19 year old and a 23, 24 year old um, in terms of their bodies, uh, their experience uh, and, and what they know about college basketball. So uh, it's, it's a unique time frame for sure. And, you know, the NIL component, um, the way the rules have changed, you know, for, for these kids now to, to be able to actualize um, some opportunities for themselves, I think really only benefits a place like Montana State because of our community. The people uh, that are here in Bozeman love Montana State Bobcat uh, athletics, and, and they support us well. And so that's going to trickle down to our athletes and, and ultimately be, um, I, I think, a very, very positive thing for us here. And also, you know, since your football program and Coach Vegan as well, helps bring awareness to, 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 the, to the program as well. So having a sense of football where you know, a football team who can go to the FCS championship pretty much if, the, if it breaks the right way each year helps bring that awareness, gets everybody involved and all you all close together. So I feel like the football component being good helps as well for you with basketball. No question about it. You know, uh, football is is obviously a, a, a part of many universities around the country. And when, when your football program is operating as ours is currently, and, and, and like you said, competing for national championships, uh, you know, right, right at the cusp of, of uh, things of that nature, um, that's going to that's gonna snowball interest and, and commitment in the community. Um, and that carries right over to the, to the basketball season. I think the last two years in particular, um, the, the city of Bozeman and the Montana State alumni community have, have seen um, the proof of concept, you know, that you can win championships in in um, the, the, the major sports like football, and men's basketball and women's basketball. And uh, that's good for everybody in the department. Um, and, and I know uh, we all benefit from from each other's success in that way. And uh, how much are you starting to scout via watching film on, on the sky? I know you're new to this league, probably some of the coaches. So. But how much of you kind of this summer, kind of in your spare time, kind of beginning to kind of look at, prepare, see what you got to deal with, come bit sky play? Yeah, I think that's that's one of the pages uh, to this story that that, that I'm going to be turning here in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, August will be a time where our students aren't aren't here. We're not, we don't have workouts, and and now our our staff and our families are settled. We're done with the recruiting process. We've had our our summer workouts. Um, and so that'll be a great time uh, for us to dive into some of those scouting reports of the big sky, watch film. You know, there's been a lot of turnover in the conference in terms of personnel. Um, and so I have a, a very high, high respect for for the programs and coaches in this conference and, and really looking forward to getting to know them better as we prepare for the fall. Fortunately, on my staff, I have uh, Zach Payne you know, who's been in the conference for five years, the last four at the University of Montana and prior to that at Portland State. Um, Sam Scholl has 20 years of Division I experience on the West Coast in the WCC, uh, as well as at San Diego State last year. And so um, that coupled with, you know, just the, the experiences I have at the Division I level and on the West Coast, I think, give us a, a really good foundation of, of you know, knowing, um, you know, what it takes to win at this level. Now, how hard has it been to schedule uh, with you all being so good on, on Coach Frank? Uh, I know it's probably the hardest thing you do besides recruiting and scheduling. So how has that been trying to get that, that non-con thing done done for you guys? Yeah, you know, scheduling is is always a challenge when when you have a successful uh, mid-major program. I mean, it, it, the more success you have, the harder that job becomes. Uh, but, you know, I've always said that as, as you're ranking your challenges, uh, we'd much rather have the challenges be in scheduling than than in recruiting, because if you can't recruit, uh, you, you never get to the second phase where your scheduling is an issue. Uh, so, you know, we look at that as an opportunity, obviously, with the success that Coach Sprinkle had here, um, you know, doesn't 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 get your phone ringing off the hook as as a as an opponent. Um, but as with most coaching changes, um, you know, we have a lot of new pieces here, a lot of new faces. And so um, there's enough people that, you know, probably, uh, you know, think this might be a good time to sign up and play Montana State. So, you know, they got my number. I hear that. Yeah, because I, I know from sitting in the guys' offices a lot, uh, I know schedule is kind of the hardest thing, you know, sitting in the offices with guys and talking to them on, on the recruiting trail at the Peace Jam and at Lake Point. I'm like, I know. 
Yeah. No, we, we were fortunate that uh, we had a, a multi-team event on the books for next year that was scheduled. Um, so that gave us a couple home games. And then we had a couple home games that were returning from previous contracts. So we had a couple games to fill. Uh, we should be announcing our schedule here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we are we are done with it now, which is nice heading into the fall. And, and we have eight non-conference home games, which is a, a pretty uh, pretty good place to start. So we're excited about uh, being able to bring the community out and see this uh, this next chapter. Coach Lug, you may ask this, man, at what point did you feel like you wanted to become a coach? I know my father is a coach. You know, uh, I'm a coach's son. I know it wasn't for me because I'm a little bit I'm a little bit too competitive and my mouth get me in trouble. So I'll, <laughs> I have a violation against me for some of I may say when I get on the court, you get too competitive. But uh, at what point did you decide you want to get into coaching? This would just be, be, be your uh, path for, for your life, man. Yeah. So, you know, I, I knew at a fairly young age that that when I got done playing um, that, that I, I could see myself coaching. And for me, uh, I grew up around the game as well. My grandfather uh, is the winningest high school basketball coach in the state of Washington. Uh, he was in our community uh, there at Mercer Island High School for 42 years. Uh, and so I grew up, you know, wanting to be a Mercer Island Islander, wanting to win state championships and, and following the lead of, you know, a lot of players from our community that went on to play in college and then actually had a number of uh, former alumni that, that got into college coaching um, or professional coaching. Quinn Snyder, now the head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, played at Mercer Island High School for my grandfather. So, I, you know, my first exposures to college basketball were watching him at Duke and go to three Final Fours. Um, and, and that really presented, you know, the, the dream for me to uh, to get into coaching one day. Uh, so I probably was one of those rare kids at age 14 that had a notebook. And, you know, I remember watching Big East Monday big Monday and, and writing down, writing down sets and, 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 and collecting notebooks of scouting reports in college. Um, and then really absorbing, you know, the processes that went into winning. Um, and so I, I feel like, you know, I was born to do this and uh, you know, it's, it's been an amazing journey. Well, you see the head I have on it though, about my main job is currently Atlanta Hawks. So do you have a story that I can, I can, I can run by coach Quinn and, and if he can be maybe shocked that I know that I, that I could tell him. <laughs> uh man i mean i just know that uh you know coach coach snyder um was was one of those guys in our community that if you were a young kid you you idolized and looked up to and and wanted to uh to be like you know and so there was a a trail of of us you know players that came through in the late 80s uh in the mid 90s and, and myself in the late 90s uh that, that really looked up to to his journey in the game and um you know for me personally when he got into to college coaching at duke and then at missouri and um and then studying his 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 work at the nba level you know he's been a a, a, a model that you can uh, learn a lot from he's had a lot of success at various levels um, you know, my, my, my core memory, like going back to childhood, the very first thing I remember, uh, really is walking out of the state championship game in 1985, you know, as a ball boy with the state championship trophy, like on my head, you know, looking up through the bowels of, of that box, uh, getting onto the bus. And so, you know, those things were, uh, you know, dreams that I saw him live out. And then, uh, I got a chance to, to live out myself a little bit as well. Hey, that's that's great. I'm almost I'm gonna let though I had somebody from your old neighborhood on my show, Coach Snyder. So he'll love to hear that, man. And 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 for you, man, uh, tell me about some food spots in Bozeman. I know on the, on the Boss Man Show, Coach Logan, we're foodies here. So what are some good spots in Bozeman you found to eat since you've been in town these past few months, man? Man, there's there's a lot. Uh, there there's a lot. Uh, the, the the place I'm going to dinner tonight is called Revelry. And uh, it's a it's a really, really good spot uh, close to Main Street in town. Uh, I've, I've been there a number of times for uh, burgers, pasta, fish, uh, really, really good spot. Um, there's there's a there's a number of, of places in town. There's Gran uh, Granny's Donuts about two blocks down the street that only opens like three days a week. And, you know, apparently they do enough business in three days. They can kick back on, on Monday through Wednesday. I had my first maple bar from them last weekend and it was unbelievable. So 
I got to try to get them to open up on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I get my week going a little bit earlier. Uh, but this is this is a foodie town. This is a place you got to come check out for yourself. And I'll say this to, to any Atlanta recruits, it's a direct flight from Atlanta to Bozeman, just so you all know. So it, you, you can get home easily. So Coach Logie has told you very well today. I'm going to let you know. He's got to bring a coat with you, but it's a direct flight from Atlanta to Bozeman. I appreciate that. It's a lot easier to get here than people realize. I didn't know myself, but, I mean, there's direct flights from, from L.A., Dallas, Atlanta, Salt Lake City, Seattle, Denver. It's it's uh, it, it's a it's a good it's a good hub for the for, for the Montana uh, Montana State Bobcats for sure. So Logie, it's been great pleasure to meet, meet you today, man. Talk today on this on the show, man. Full of chat with you down the road, man. I love your energy, man. I love that you're probably gonna fit your hat, man. I put a quarter zip. My favorite thing is to wear. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I like respect it. it. I love it, man. I appreciate. it. Thanks for having me on, man. I look forward to talking to you in March. Same here, brother. All right, man. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.